Hi guys, Squirrel here. Welcome to episode two of Discover Great Britain. Uh, this one's called Snowdonia and Beyond. Now, if you remember, at the end of episode one, we flew from Liverpool down to Carnarfon, Carnarfon Airport, which is just here. This one here. Now, if we have a quick look on Sky Vector, that is EGCK, Echo Golf, Charlie Kilo. And what we're going to do in this episode is we are going to take off in a westerly direction here. We're going to uh, sweep right and north, loop back and come down this way. Now the reason is this is Snowdonia. This is a, a national park in England and it's quite high up Snowdonia. So we need to gain some height on a climb here. So we're going to go up to about 5,000 feet before we then start heading in a southerly direction. Now... In this episode, I have to tell you up front that it doesn't go exactly to plan. We kind of lose our way a little bit in the VFR navigation. But what we're aiming to do is to come south down here into Port Merion. Now, I'll tell you about this area here during the video of Port Maddock and Port Merion. Uh, but then we head south and we are aiming for this place here. We'll fly over Barmouth and we'll when we get to here, which is... There's a town here called McKinleth, and we're going to go for this estuary, and we're going to head east at this estuary, and the plan is, and this is where we get a little bit lost, is to hit McKinleth, and then follow this A road around here, this circular line. This circle here is known as the Mac Loop, and this loop is used by the RAF uh, when they fly tornadoes, and they're doing low-level flying. They'll test it through these valleys here. Uh, what we're aiming to do is doing a partial Mac Loop. We're aiming to go around this bit, and then come down off here out of Dolgok and come out of Tin Tywin there. That's the plan, but like I say, it doesn't quite go according to plan. Having done the Mac loop, we shall head south to Aberystwyth. There's actually a castle here. And we'll head south down the coastline all the way along here, past Newquay, which is this bit that sticks out. So you should see Newquay. And then we keep going until we get to, where is it? Uh, as Aberporth, and then eventually we'll get down to losing my my bearing slightly here this is um this is the, the basically this here is fish guard admin the fish guard port this goes to ireland this is quite a big bay and as we come along here you'll see it uh when we hit this bay at, at goodwick we shall head south down this a40 and we are aiming for this airfield here this airfield here which is called haverford aerodrome and if we zoom out, you can see where it is. It's just about in the middle of Wales, just north of Haverford West. On the on Sky Vector, you can see it down um, here. Here it is. Haverford West, Echo Golf, Foxtrot, Echo. That is our destination in this video. Uh, after that, we're going to be heading off down here, and we'll eventually be leaving Wales in the next episode. Matt, good morning. Good morning. Do you realise I had to get out of bed at 4am just to make this 5.30 flight? Do you realise I got woken up at 4am from a text from you saying, wake up? <laughs> I had to have two coffees just to sit in this aircraft. Well, my, my morning intake has been spicy chicken and I'm regretting it now because the inside of my mouth is on fire. So this is going to be interesting. I've got a friend who says the same thing after he has a packet of flaming monster munch. Yeah, I don't like monster munch. They, uh, the pickled you, onion ones are absolutely disgraceful. What? How dare you? They put this like weird sort of starchy substance on your palate. No, you can't say that. Hula hoops. Let's say you like hula hoops. I don't mind hula hoops. They're okay. Meh. But monster munch, I don't like them. Okay, I think we better. It looks like the sun's cracking out through that cloud over there. Um, which one? Oh yeah, over, wait. Just the left, yeah. over the left wing. You see it? Yeah, 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 I see it. I also mm. see you as well. I guess that's a good point to make. Yes, I see you. Interestingly, though, I can also see your control movements, and you can see mine. If I wiggle my yep. control surfaces. We have turned into David Blaine and made it work. <laughs> I think where we're heading is straight over there in front of us, isn't it? The hills of Snowdonia. So, yeah, essentially where we parked, just a little bit to the left by about 20 degrees. Right, Matt, are you ready to start engines and get going? I am indeed. I see you've uh, opened your, your canopy there. Are you just trying to get some fresh air or are you about to throw up? A bit of both, I think. It's that chicken. I keep talking about it, but it was really quite disgusting, so... 
<laughs> All right, so I'm gonna start my engines and stuff then, okay? Or dodger, me too. Right, let's get some fuel going here. Let's lock that in. Turn the master on. And... Engine started. Sounds good. Alternator on. Let's get some power. Position and strobe lights are on. Just check that. Yep. Position and strobe is now on. Let's do the second engine. Oh, look at all the smoke and stuff. It looks so cool. Engine on. Alternator in position. Okay, now then. We need the pito heat. And then we need to do a bit down here, which is PFD, alternate units, HPA, and XPDR 7000 for VFR. 7000. Cool beans. Right, now we'll get some instrument lighting going on because it is early morning. Tax lights and landing lights can stay off for now. Don't need the floodlights. Uh, let's do our. So, heading bug, we're going to be heading roughly south east ish. So, I'm going to put that. Okay, I am about, started. I don't know about you. On 25, that'll do. Uh, yeah, engines are fired up. Good stuff. Okay, do you want to take off first this time? Uh, yeah, can do. So, southwesterly wind, uh, which means we'll go from runway 26. So, I'm going to taxi forward and to the left and taxi past you. Yeah. And you can just follow me. Yeah, and then you're going to hook around, do a U turn, and take off towards the sea. Yep, pretty much. Um. I'm a little bit apprehensive of the runway length here, so I'm going to use the approach flap uh, setting. It's not normal okay. that you would use flap for takeoff in this thing, but this runway is pretty small. It doesn't look so bad. I mean, it's got tarmac on it. It's not just grass, you know? That's the start. Yeah, well, better be safe than sorry. <laughs> Come on, then. And don't scratch my uh, aircraft on the way past, okay? I'm sad I had to turn track IR off again because the sun just keeps coming through the window. So every time I want to look at you, I've got a physically, like, easy dock pan it. Take off settings on flaps. You should be able to see me move. On trim, sorry. It's instant. Uh, you're moving forward? Yes. So FS Cloud was nice, but you can't beat a bit of direct hosting. Very true. I'll give you a wave of my rudder pedals as you go past. See if can, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> can you see my flap? Uh, the, the stage of flap. See what? I can't see the, the stage of flap I have down. Can you see that? No, one? not yet. You're not. You're not past me yet. Okay. I'm on my way. Wait, who's the other guy in the aircraft with you? <laughs> it's Steve. Kibbertons come along for the ride. <laughs> <laughs> right. We'll leave landing lights off. I'll tell you what, I need some power to get this thing moving. Alright, I'm starting to follow you. Could you see the flaps? Uh, yes, just about. Nice. This reminds me. So, after departure, do you want to go left or right? Um. Okay, it doesn't really matter, does it? If we go right, we'll see Anglesey again. Yeah, but if we go right, well, either way, we need to kind of do a looping climb. If you want to go over to, towards uh, Snowdonia, because the mountains up there are pretty high, yeah, and you'll get there very, very fast. I mean, you can see on the you know on the GPS on the right, 
you can see where the, where the mountains are quite easily. Yes, I've caught you up after faffing about with my GPS. It's the best part. You know, in, in episode one, you called it a sat nav. <laughs> I like calling it sat nav. Not like it tickled me more than it should have done. <laughs> it's basically just a sat nav. It's like is, we should be powered by TomTom. -tom. Satellite navigation? And tell me it's not. <laughs> you tell the guys at fourth like that and see what they say to you. <laughs> <laughs> Right, I'm gonna line up and take off. If uh, right. are you ready? Or do you want me to wait a bit? Oh, I'm right behind you. Sweet. Okay, well. If I fail and go off the end of the runway then you know you need more flap. Yeah, fair enough. So I'm I'm the kind of test dummy in this scenario. Look at all those static caravans on the right. Wow, yeah? Jeez, wow. Do they just overlook the runway? That must be so cool. Just sitting yeah. there watching aircraft take off. Well, I mean... <laughs> they don't usually use this runway, so... I don't know if they'd see anything. Some guy in my... In, in, when I posted my version of the video, he said that he fl flies from here, and they actually use the other runway, so... What, times have changed since I last went here. What, the one that I landed on? Yeah, the one, the one you got... The one that you landed on was the correct one. What? Even though I said it was the incorrect one. Well, that's weird, because somebody posted the one I landed on was probably disused because of the wind turbines over there. Well, <laughs> there we right. go then. <laughs> Whatever, anyway, I'm taking off. Wish me luck. YOLO! Yep. You need to pick up some speed there, mate. Yeah, hang on, I'm getting nailed by this wind. <laughs> oh, no. Can you see this? No. I'm like, left, right, left, right. Yeah, that, that flap is definitely required. Fair enough. I can barely make 700 feet a minute in the climb. Whoa, what the heck? Did you say we were turning right or left? I forgot. Is it really bouncy runway? Yeah, it's terrible. Is that... Like, my front wheel keeps going boink, boink off the ground. Yeah. I'm going to turn to the right because I'm climbing really slowly. Okay. <laughs> wow. I'm up. Yeah, I'm getting a traffic warning. I'm getting like a weird jutter. What do you mean? Like a, uh, the screen's kind of bouncing. You might have to turn like DHM off at Easy Dock or something. What's DHM? It's the thing that causes the vibrations. I had to do it as well. Yeah, but it's not so much vibration, it's more of a like a jerk. It's kind of stopped now. Okay. Okay, I was right about the terrain. It is a radar. Because when you take off, it then fixes itself. When you get above, above a thousand feet, look at your GPS and see the terrain. It's still red for me. Yeah, it'll refresh in a minute. I need to turn this thing off. Yeah, I don't know what that weird jerky thing was. It's gone, though. It's still seeing traffic. That's gone. Oh, yeah, the terrain's refreshed now. Yeah, I see it. It's all gone kind of yellow with the red. It's, that looks so nice, though. Yeah, that's quite cool. Right, so I'm back over the top of the airfield now. Well, kind of just sort of out to the west of it a little bit. What's your altitude? Um, it is 1,600. Okay, I'm at 1,200 in climbing. Yeah, so there's a, here's the thing, right? You want to go to Snowdonia, that's all well and good, but have you seen that cloud base? <laughs> well, from my experience of Snowdonia, the clouds are usually not very far away. Yeah, well, um, I mean, 
I don't really know what to say. Like, if if this was real life, thankfully it's not. We would not even be going anywhere near them. But we can try anyway and just sort of hope for the best. Yeah. Well, the worst case scenario is we get over there and we can always sort of, you know, go down the side of it and not actually go near the peak. Well, I can see the peak just in front of me. So I'm just going to head for that and climb. The thing is, looking back at the runway, like the one I landed on has two wind turbines right on it. I can't see that being the active runway. Hmm. I, I just. I've, I think that the one once. that we la that you landed on and that we just took off from, I think that that's got to be active, surely. Well, I've only been there once in my life, and when I went there, we landed on two six. So, I mean, I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. I don't know anyone that flies currently there. Like, maybe I could ask around. But yeah. someone in my comments said one thing, someone in your comments said another thing. Yeah. I mean the one that you the one that we took off from is has got caravans at the end of it as well, so that that's another thing to say that might be disused, but the wind turbines just I don't know. you wouldn't have that as an active runway, that'd be crazy. Yeah, I need to um Hmm, I'm thinking of who I can ask. The only guy I, I could have asked has gone to do his commercial pilot's license in New Zealand, so we never speak anymore. What's your um, altitude, your level now, sir? Uh, 35. Oh, wait, no, I'm not leveling at 35. I'm passing 35. I'm going to go to, we'll say, 5,500, I guess. How high is Snowdonia? I'm not quite sure, but it's definitely higher than 3,500 where I'm at now. Yeah, it's actually quite nice. Orbex modeled it really well. Yeah, it does look nice. Imagine it in winter covered in snow. It's ironic, isn't it, that it's called Snowdonia, but it's green. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to turn to the right and dive down that valley and by the time I'm at the end of that where it meets the shore is where basically the that, that Porth Marion place is. Yeah. The reason I want to go there is because Port Marion is where they filmed the series The Prisoner. Is it bad that I've never watched that? Have you never watched that? It's one of those things that you, everybody should watch in their lifetime. Nice. Okay, I'm like right above you now. Back into the left. I'm actually back into the right. 0 0.6 nautical. I'm actually close my distance on you. Although my air speed, nice. my air speed's going a bit crazy. I need to pull up. Yeah, you don't need to be too uh, too aggressive with it. I almost killed us then. I thought you were flying down the valley. Where are you going? I am. I just needed to get past this mountain. You're banking left. Yeah, because that valley where you're, I think, where you're meaning is going back towards Carnarfon. You um, want to take the one that's here now in front of me. Okay, coming round. But the, the issue is, if we'd have carried on in a straight line there, we'd have clipped that mountain, so... The issue what? If we'd have carried on in a straight line, we would have clipped that mountain. Yeah. That GPS works really well. I love the way it highlights it in yellow and stuff. Yeah, and it's all relative as well to where you are, instead exactly. of it loading everything in one go. I'm not entirely sure how legal what we're doing is, but it's fun anyway. <laughs> My terrain radar now looks like one of those x-ray machines at the airport. Totally. What altitude have you got though? You must be pretty low. I'm 1700 feet descending. Thought you were. 
I can see some like random transit vans just driving around the hills. <laughs> Right, is this, I think this is it over here, isn't it, Port Merion on the left? Yeah, it's just off to our left. I'll let you be the tour guide, because I've no idea about this area. Well, basically, it's like full of very, there's lots and lots of very beachy flatlands as the, as the tide goes out. It just leaves this enormous flat area, and there's a, you can go to Port Merion, and the town where they filmed the series is there. And if you've not really seen the series, a lot of it won't make any sense, but think of a giant massive like two meter wide inflatable bubble gum ball that's the thing that chased um, Patrick McGowan across the flats when he tried to escape that's why it's called the prisoner but essentially yeah he was this guy who had this really high important position in some government military um, organization and he tried to retire handed in his retirement and suddenly found himself kidnapped and in this place and um, he was called number six and he never knew who number one was he was only ever allowed to talk to number two and he kept asking him why am I here and the whole series is based around that but what's really fascinating about the series is the intro to the to the series if you watch it it's about two minutes long and it pretty much tells you everything you need to know about the storyline it's quite a cool intro Nice. How old is that? 1969-ish. Uh, it's like late 60s, I think, when he did it. And even to this day, he won't tell people what the story is actually about. <laughs> like, he just keeps nice. the whole mystery. What a champion. Which I think is the thing to do, to be honest. But yeah, if you visit it, they've got like a prisoner shop, and you can buy the golf ball type seats they sit in. Like, imagine like a white golf ball with a piece cut out, and then you kind of sit inside it. They sell those, you can buy them. That's pretty cool. Yep. So, essentially, where I am now, then, is pretty much it. I just flew over some sort of caravan site. Yeah, I don't... Who knows what's there now? But, um, I'm guessing the tide is in for us at the moment. I don't know, did it mod does it model the tide in this game? I don't know. <coughs> uh, no, it doesn't, no. It's a shame. Because the tide seems to be in, and if it was out, you'd see a lot of flats here that you can run across. What's your speed? 120. Okay. I'm just seeing if I can see the. the it was, you say there was a castle? Um, or is that not here? No, there's, there's no castle at. Port Merion, I don't think. There's a heritage railway thing at Festiniog, which if you go there, it's a lovely little trip, actually. Uh, Festiniog Railway, you can take, and when it stops, it comes over. There's like a, almost like a bridge. Can we see the bridge, actually? There's a bridge over the estuary bit, um, which I think we might have flown past now. It's a lovely, scenic little thing to draw, to take a journey on. Actually, I've lost you. Which way did you go? Um, I went... I'm just following the bay, kind of, around to the right, and then back down the coast. Okay. Yeah, I've completely lost you at the moment. I'm heading directly towards that Echo Golf Oscar Delta. Okay, so you, are you heading, like, 190 or something? Oh, there you are. Yeah, I'm heading yeah, 197. There it is. I think I saw it. It's called something like the Britannia Terrace and it's like a straight piece of railway track on a bridge that goes across the uh, the estuary, estuary mouth itself and then brings you into Festin, in Port, Port Maddock is where it brings you into. Well, and you just saw that or have you not seen it? Uh, I just saw it as I was flying away from it, but um, nice. it's, it's not massively it. detailed, but it is it's a lovely thing to do on a, on if you're ever in this part of the the world, you know, get on that little railway. Yeah. Well, from where we are now, if you remember me talking about it, just off my left wing, it'll be off your left wing soon. Is Shell Island? 
and I don't know anyone as well if anyone's ever been to Shell Island, but it's essentially just a big campsite that's right by the water, and uh, it's actually pretty fun considering that it is literally just a campsite. But uh, there's like all sorts of rock pools and stuff, and um, yeah, if you've got kids, then you know they they pretty much love it. That's the sticky out bit here, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's literally right by the. You'll see the airfield. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, it's it's just all underneath it. I don't know if they've modelled it. That runway looks pretty tarmarked up. I'm pretty certain that's more of a grass strip, isn't it? Again, I've, I've honestly no idea. It could be. Yeah, I'm just passing Barmouth now on the left. Uh, yeah, me too. There's some sort of, I don't even know, bridge-ish thing. P3D makes it look so glorious though. Like, if I look off my left wing, all I can see is like some really nice reflection, and then the water yeah. in the background just shimmering. It's so nice. It does look splendid, I must admit. The, the, the thing is about it though is the frame rate is, is there, you know? The 30 FPS is pretty solid. Yep, it's pretty nice. Because that's, that's the killer, is when the frame rate starts dropping in down to the 20s and stuff. Particularly, like, if you're landing an aircraft and it's 20 FPS, it's so hard to get any kind of feedback. Well, they, you know, um, in X-Plane, I know this is a bad thing to talk about if we're using prepared, but in X-Plane, in some of the aircraft, if you get low frame rate, it actually comes up on the screen and tells you that the frame rate is too low for the aircraft to be realistic in how it handles. <laughs> So like change your settings, otherwise you won't get the, the you know the maximized potential out of it. Yeah, that's fair enough. I love the um, the scenery as it comes up to the edge of the water, and you can see where the texture's just mapped onto it. So you get these roads that are on the slope of the of the land as it meets the water. Yeah. yeah. It just like stretched around, it looks quite funny. We should start having a tally of how many caravan sites I can see. Yeah, it does seem to be There's quite a few. There's one below me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see that, I'm coming up on that now. That's ridiculous. All these static caravans. So this is essentially where we make the left turn into the loop. We've just got to find the A road that goes up to Mackenleth, whatever it's called. Mackenleth? Mackenleth, that's the one. My Welsh, obviously, you know, GCSE A levels in, in Welsh. I'm yeah. Doing. I don't remember there being Welsh on my uh, O level curriculum. O levels. I'm just yeah, going to leave that there. Yeah, GCSE is easy mode. I remember when I was doing my GCSEs and all my mother used to talk about was, well, in my day, they were called O-Levels. <laughs> so, there we go. My day, we used to examine you properly rather than just let you do all the coursework. It's very true. Well, right, left. So, are you going... Oh, wait a second. Isn't this where we're going left? Yeah, we are. But what I want to do, for ease, I'm going to just carry on across this estuary and I'm going to pick up that A-road because otherwise I'll lose the A-road and I don't want to do that. Okay, I'm going to start. I'll, I'll intercept you then because you're a bit in front of me. Yeah. Wow, there's a lot of golf courses down here as well. Look at that. The thing is, like, playing golf by the sea sounds like a great idea, except when it's windy. Like, the Atlantic wind coming in, unbuffeted, means you, you smack the ball and it just goes where it wants to. Yeah, I don't. I don't play golf, so it's fine. <laughs> right, so I'm gonna turn left and hug this estuary, but on the south side, and eventually I should see this A road. But it goes in yeah. a bit first before we see it. You should be before that hill, I think. Well, it's 
if you look at the, the way the map shows it, it's quite far in because you've got this little, you've got the estuary and then you've got a bit of land which has made its own mini island a little bit further in. And then beyond that is a couple of sort of meanders of the river, if you will. And then you've got the uh, that place that I can't pronounce. <laughs> see if I can see you. 0.6, you should see me over your left wing. Uh, well, directly? Uh, no, at your 7 o'clock, roughly. Okay, looking... Altitude? Pretty much the same as yours, 1500. Hmm. I'm like pretty much right behind you now, 0 0.4. Yeah, I can't look behind me very well. There's too many things in the way. I'm throttling back because I'm catching up on you big time. Yeah, it's okay, I'll put the power on. I'm trying to. This. You see the river that's in front of us, yeah? Yeah, I see the meandering. Well, the, the, the A road is actually off to the right by a little bit, but I think we can just carry on in this direction. Yeah, I mean, this... that zigzaggy bit there, that's literally going towards McKinleth now. Yeah. But if we can't find that road, we're going to find it hard to pick up the Mac loop. It's okay, I'm an expert in navigation, I got this. Uh-huh. I hope you sense the sarcasm in that statement. Isn't that the road directly below? Uh, no, not yet. You sure? The road right next to the river? It can't be because the road next to the river Yeah, there's like two roads. There's a little road and there's a tarmac road. I think it's a tarmac road. Yeah, you're like right over it. You are literally yeah, over the road. I'm turning my aircraft so I can see the road better. Well, the river ends here, which is pretty much... Oh yeah, this is it then. Yeah, this is the A road. Yeah, because all the cars are on it. Nice. So we just follow this. This little town that we're going through now, though, isn't Mac, whatever it's called. Yeah, we can more or less, f more or less follow the uh, the river as it comes in. Yeah, pretty much. Wait, does that river go through? Oh, it does. Yeah, the river just goes straight past it. really misty so I can't see that far forward. So Monk, tell people why it's called the Mac Loop then. Um, I actually have no idea, but I think Good. it's probably something to do with the start point being at that town, or that little village. What, the Mac McKinleth, yeah, I think that's probably yeah. it. It has to be, because there's no other way that, why, why would they call it Mac Loop? I mean, I guess another thing people could say is, maybe you go like, Mac 1 around it or something. Exactly, it's like supersonic aircraft. But, but they do do that. I mean, if you go on YouTube and you just search Mac Loop Whales and watch them, they take, you know, the tornadoes and that around them and they literally, they're going so fast that, like, the vortexes off the wings are just big circles. Yeah, I've experienced walking along the valley when a tornado GR4s come flying down it. And uh, it's quite nice. something. <laughs> It's, you just hear this noise and you think, what there? And then it suddenly, boom, flies straight past you and you think, okay, well that happened. Yeah, I can only imagine. Right, okay, I think this is the start of it here. Yeah, there's the bridge. If you look down to your left, you'll see the little bridge crossing the river. And then the road, it forks to the left and right. Yeah. So if, you, if it forked to the left, you go up towards Chorus, which is the exit point for us. Indeed. So what we're going to do is we're going to fork to the right and follow it to the right all the way around. Now hopefully Orbex has this model properly so we don't end up like in Birmingham or something. <laughs> well I can still see the road so far so we're doing okay. 
Yeah, but the problem is the road actually then splits left and right. We need to make sure we keep to the left. Otherwise, we'll literally end up in Birmingham, so... Indeed. We should take a car and my GoPro camera and drive this one day. Yeah. Good luck with that. I see. It's, I be it's best on a motorbike, to be honest. Yeah, I was going to say, I think that's probably what you get most enjoyment out of, is using your motorbike. Do you actually yeah. have a motorbike? Not anymore. The thing is... The, the Welsh police are really hot on um, like motorbikes zooming over Snowdonia. So you, you've got to be really careful. Uh, we're, we're flying the Mac loop at Mac 0.1. <laughs> I'm getting some nice terrain warnings. This is pretty much what they'd get. Terrain, terrain. I'm not getting terrain. those. I must have it turned off. I don't think you're flying well enough, to be honest. Uh, I'm flying at 1,000. I'm literally like, if I went any lower, I'd touch that school bus. It's interesting because on my screen I can see you. You're seeing school off. buses. Yeah. Terrain. Oh, there you go. Terrain. I'm now I'm getting a terrain. Terrain. Um, have you spotted the left turn yet? There should be a road that forks to the right at some point. Yeah, I'm still waiting to find that. I'm hoping it's just around this corner where these mountains are. It's, it's, seen, it's interesting, the scenery. Up. The scenery is like impressively detailed, but if you look really closely at a lot of stuff, it's all squished flat as well. Yeah. It's like if you look at it, they take a, an aerial photograph and then they they build out some of the buildings just to give it a 3D look. I mean, considering the platform they have to work with and what it's capable of, they've done pretty well. Yeah. And then this just goes all the way around. You reckon? Where do you think we are right now then? Um, if you look... I can't pronounce any of these names, Paul. Why do you ask me these questions? Um, se semes, chemes, <laughs> semes, c a c e m m a e s. Right. See that A road there, the A four seventy. Oh yeah. On that, pretty much, we just turned left yeah, before Commons. Um, I can't say that, can I? Because PG stream. <laughs> but if we, I don't understand because we're heading east and we should be heading more northeast. We are heading. Um, well, I mean, if you look at that place, it's kind of eastish until it turns left. Like I'm turning left. Oh wait, hang on. Don't think this is right. I think I may have screwed up. Hang on. Let me put the terrain back on. Yeah. Okay, I know how to fix this. I'm going to climb up really quickly and just have a look around. We're, we're heading east and that's not right. That just can't be right. I'm putting the train back on now. Yeah, okay. Where are we, Paul? Exactly. We're, we're, we're kind of... <laughs> I don't... Maybe Orbex doesn't have that road properly modelled or something. I cover your right wing. Can you see me? Um... No. Wait. Are you kidding? I'm right oh, next yeah, to you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang on, I just saw you. Nice. Right, let's let's turn to the left and climb, and see if we can pick this back up somewhere. Because we come so far inland that um, we're actually, well, put it this way: I can see Welsh Pools VOR. You know what you're saying about going to Birmingham? <laughs> yeah, I was almost correct. Yeah, I th I think you. Picked up the 470 basically, A470. Yeah, I'm going to um, down eastbound towards. as opposed to northbound. I think that's what happened. Yeah. And then when you thought you were turning right down the A458 and you were, you were hanging a left, like you say, that's where you were heading towards Pandy or something. <laughs> Rip. 
So we, we visited the downwind leg of the Mac Loop. That was it. Yeah. <laughs> More like the Mac semicircle. <laughs> the Mac cradle, we'll call it. Where you do half of a loop. You know, you know, thinking actually back now, I think one of the virtual, like, Royal Air Force people made a modification to the scenery that showed you the Mac loop on the ground. Maybe we should have uh, got that before we started. Yeah. <laughs> it's difficult because you look at, you know, VFR, you're relying entirely on the, um, on the terrain that you've got and... Yeah. Trying to spot the roads and where they branch off and that kind of thing. There's no, there's no other way to do it. There's no kind of navigational beacons we can use. Yeah, so, the, the, the reality is though, in real life, it's so much easier because you don't have generic waves of terrain and texture. You know, it's it's all yeah. Well, it's real. I think though, down underneath my left wing is the A row we should have probably followed. Possibly. But this will take us back now. To the wind farms. Yeah. If we headed straight on 270, we'll pick up the, the river as it goes into the estuary. Yeah. I'm on the coast, so I'm heading south. Are, have you passed the caravans? Yeah, yeah, I've just passed the caravans now. Wow. Really? So I just did that entire loop for no reason? <laughs> I'm one nautical away from you now. I, I'm pretty certain that's Aberyst with right ahead. It can't be. What do you mean it can't be? We only just left the estuary. Look at it. It's the only thing that can be Aberyst with. Look, it's even got the river coming out of it. It's got to be. Uh, oh, there's some boats. I see a boat. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah, there's the castle. It is, you're right. Fair enough. Welcome to Aberystwyth, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I want oh, to be a bit lower, but I'm going to break my aircraft if I carry on. Yeah, what is that? There's like a little harbour. Yeah. I swear I just saw a castle, but now I've lost it again. Yeah, there should be one. I'm thinking it would be on top of that hill, if anything. No, it's not there. See the harbour though, that looks pretty cool. Yeah, bridges, boats. Wait, is that the castle over there? No, there's just a lot of bridges. Yeah. I'm look on Google Maps and see where this castle is. It could be, I mean, it could be one of those castles that's just nothing more than a few ruins left, you know? Yeah, that's a really good point. If it, hot tip here, if ever you go sights it into a castle, always make sure there's actually a castle there before you go. Because they'll say things like, something castle, and you get there, and they're just like, well, that's the three walls, that's all that's left. Great. <laughs> that's just a rock that remains. <laughs> exactly. No, but that, that place we went past was definitely called Aberystwyth. The castle is not a castle, it's ruins. There you go. So, you're right about that. No, it is actually marked as Aberystwyth Castle, though. Wow, if we yeah, had some you are walkers. close. It's so cool, I'm right behind you. Now, try and spot Cardigan Castle. <laughs> this is where we figure it's just ruins? Probably. Wait, I think I see it over there on the right. Oh, Maybe. No, I think it's just some trees. It should be right on the A road. Well, just a little bit off the A road. No, no it's, it. it's not been modelled. Damn you, Orbex! Oh well. Well, it's all downhill from here because we've got to land now. Uh, we're still quite a way off, I think. Well, I mean, I suppose, but we're not that far away. But we only got about another 11 or so miles till we hit Haverford West. I think this is the A road below us. 
we follow this A road, it'll take us straight to um, Parag. sticky out bit where the standard line is. Oh actually no 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 that's wrong. It's no it's not. Where we are now is a place called Parog. Yeah indeed. And then over this bit and that sticky out bit further in the distance that's where the stena line is. Yeah yeah okay I read it wrong. We're in a place called Bryn Helan. Isn't this where they bring all the oil in as well? Isn't Goodick the place where all of the UK oil comes into? I don't know. According to Google Maps, that is Fishguard to Rossler in Ireland. I remember watching a, a documentary on BBC Three, or BBC Two, I can't remember, about how they get all of the oil into the UK, and I swear that they use this port here as an example. They've actually modelled the Stena line as if. Can you see it? I'm looking. It's it's parked up. <laughs> oh the, yeah. On the coast. Looks pretty small. Yeah, I, I mean, I've only got the proportions wrong a little bit there. Yeah, it's not a standard line, it's just a little random boat. Yeah. But it's still pretty cool. Right, we need to head 180. Yeah, turning now. Looking for you. Where have you gone? You overtook me. I'm behind you now. Oh, okay. I'm heading south-ish. Yeah, you should see a massive A road once you hit 180. I think that's it. If you follow that road, that goes to the airfield. Yeah, there it is. I see it. Trey, exciting. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, fly with it on my right and then do a, a lot of left arc, as it were, and come back around. So you're going to fly... I'm keeping it on my right. Yeah. Sorry, well, which one? If, if you fly where you are now, on a heading of about 160, you'll fly past runway 21, and then you can just kind of enter a right-hand base for runway 27. Because where you are now pretty much is a right base. You can see, you know the cross runway, yeah? Yeah. That's the one you'll be landing on, and and it's this side as well. So you're pretty much bang on where you need to be. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, I'll go straight past it now, and then start banking left. You want to bank left? Oh, as in you want? I see. You want to you want to bank left and and slow down and descend. That would be my plan. Okay. Yeah, you can do that. Well, in so that case, I'm we're landing fly on over the field. We're landing on a heading of two seven zero, roughly. Yeah. Yeah, it's about that, yeah. See, this other one, I don't think, has Pappy lights. Yeah, well, the Pappy lights really don't do very much. Dude, are you sure that runway's long enough? Of course I am. It's miles long. Not the one we're going for. Hit, hit the brake, should be okay. I'll position him behind you as soon as I see you. Tell me when you're, like, lined up and flying back in towards the runway. I'm banking round for an approach now. Come in, line up. Sweet. I'm squinting to see if I can see you, but I just can't find you. <laughs> Descending. Are you? Can you see the runway? Yeah, I can see the runway. So, I mean, take a guess at how far out you are. I guess two nautical. Okay. Can you see me? I'm not even looking. Concentrating on this. <laughs> Fair enough. There's a nice line of trees just before the runway. Yep. 
I'm going to assume that you pass me, so I'm going to start to turn in. You should never assume when you're flying, just pro tip. That's what landing gear not coming out. Right, my landing gear's not coming out. What the hell? <laughs> Are you serious? Um, Landa Gear, where are you? Okay, that's better. <laughs> I'll put mine out now, just so I can slow right down. Okay, that was interesting. The button I thought was mapped to my Landa Gear wasn't, and the G key doesn't work either. So, yeah. Sorry, did you click it? Yeah, I've got it. It's basically I, I changed the control on the um, on the mapping. I remember now. Wow, what the hell? I'm going for a missed approach. Forget it. Oh rip! Yeah, I'm going back up. I'm not risking that. What happened? Well, basically, because a landing gear problem. It kind of just upset my um, my approach completely, so I'm just pulling back up. Basically, it put me because because my incline was wrong. I started to then go into a stall and stuff, so I'm just gonna miss it. I'll go back well, around. As long as you're back in the air, with no problems, and it's good. Yeah, it's good I'm problem. fine, but <laughs> it all started. I was on a lovely approach, but it all started with the landing gear. Once that knocked it out. Uh, my approach vector was all messed up. So yeah, safer to just go up. Did you turn to the right or the left? I turned left. I think I see you actually down there. Yeah, I might come in on the other runway. Well, if you're gonna if you're gonna come in the other runway, make sure it's the one on the opposite side of where you are, because otherwise you'll land with a tailwind, and then you will have problems. Let's do this properly. Okay, I'm approaching again. Sweet, so am I, just behind you. It's a bit windy. Yeah, it's a bit. <laughs> Constantly kind of adjusting. Land on the world's shortest runway. All I can see is sheep in the fields. Touchdown. Okay, I'm going to turn left and clear the runway. Yeah, well, I'm just over the trees, so no pressure. Okay, I may have touched the grass though. Nice. Okay, runway's clear. And touchdown. <laughs> You down safe? That was super smooth. I didn't even realise my wheels had hit the ground apart from the noise. <laughs> Just looking for the parking bays. 
have no idea where they are at this place. I think, I think on the left. Oh, there's some dudes there. There's a couple of dudes there on the right. Uh, I'm gonna go left over here because I think there's some pads here. You just stick it on the grass anywhere. Yeah, but if you notice, there's some parking bays here. Whereabouts? Just like there's a taxiway here. Oh no, that's that's isn't that fuel? No, fuel black fuel's back by the. Um, Oh no, yeah, I forget that something. Uh, park it into the wind as well. Phew, that was interesting landing. That was beautiful. Yeah, my actual touchdown was smooth, and when I landed, I kind of started to drift a little bit left and went into the, um, into the grass a bit. Yeah, after the missed approach. <laughs> gotta go, you gotta go. Indeed. Ah, the blissful sounds of engines shutting down. Indeed. That was, uh, that was really cool. Now I can open my canopy. <laughs> find the, the click spot. There we go. Feel free to get out of your aircraft, Paul. Just opening the passenger door. Oh yeah, I could see the baggage thing opening. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Very well done. <sighs> Can you believe we're almost in, or we're almost out of Wales? Yeah, indeed. So, so next stop's going to be South Wales, and then over, hop over towards. Um, uh, trying to think, which county we'll hit first? Well, we're going to be heading down towards Bath and Bristol Way, aren't we? Yeah. Then heading into Devon and Cornwall. Well, that was an eventful flight. We saw quite a lot of interesting things, and the landing was even more fun. Yeah, I. I Thoroughly enjoyed the semi Mac loop. <laughs> the Mac armchair. <laughs> We're gonna get so much hate for that. Well, no, you're not, because I was the one that was confident in my own ability well, to no, the, find it. Yeah, the best thing was you going like um, pro navigation skills. <laughs> it took yeah. us off towards Birmingham. <laughs> we got here, didn't we? That's all that matters. Indeed. Well, that's it for episode two. I do hope you enjoyed that. Even if it went a bit wrong in more than one place, that's flying for you. We adapted and carried on. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, and I shall see you on episode three when we're going to leave Wales and head down towards Devon.